So we're now going to look at um, what an increased greenhouse effect causes. So the first one to mention here is the rising sea levels caused by increased temperatures. So um, if you think about the oceans as a huge volume of water, if they're getting warmer, they will expand and obviously their levels will rise. And of course, if we have increasing temperatures, then glaciers will melt and that is putting extra water into the seas. And so the levels will rise. Another one to mention could be adverse weather. So changes in temperature will change um, climatic patterns and obviously alter the weather as a result. And we see examples of that um, every year across the globe. And the final one I'm going to mention, I've probably already said it in the as part of these two anyway, um, increased greenhouse effect causes global warming. So that's the um, average global temperature is increasing. So the final part of the video, we're going to look at the various ways um, we scientists um, can help to combat the problem. So basically, what are we doing about it? So the first thing we could mention is something like scientists have a role in monitoring levels. So that could be levels of gases in the atmosphere. It could be sea levels. And that information then would be passed on to the politicians who would um, decide on policies as a result of that. The other thing we could mention is politicians would then um, go to protocols, which are basically gatherings of lots of different countries. So an example would be the Kyoto Protocol, which took place in Japan a few years ago, where countries met and agreed um, ways forward, sort of promises that they would, they would try and keep to reduce levels. Scientists also have a role in the development of alternative energy sources. So looking at things like um, wind power, um, tidal power, solar power, and nuclear power, so to try and move away from the reliance on fossil fuels and move into cleaner energy sources. So scientists and engineers are also working on the development of more efficient combustion engines, so for transport, so aircraft, cars, lorries are all becoming more and more efficient. Every year we are able to drive further on the same amount of fuel and so on. And the other thing we're going to mention is the scientists have a role in developing something known as carbon capture and storage, CCS for short. And we're going to look at the various ways that that happens now. So one method that scientists and engineers are working on is the development of new generations of power stations which still use the conventional reaction between methane and oxygen um, but the carbon dioxide instead of being allowed to escape into the atmosphere is pressurized, liquefied and pumped very very deep underground. Ideal place for this to take place would be where there's large areas of porous rock um, with a non-porous rock on top so things like um, old coal fields and oil fields. So we've got this porous rock which can store the CO2 and the non-porous rock on top will not allow the CO2 to escape. Another way to capture and store carbon dioxide is to effectively uh, mimic a natural process whereby the carbon dioxide which is being produced in a reaction 
is reacted with uh, metal oxide, so I'm using magnesium oxide in my example, and that would produce a very, very stable compound. So in this example, you would get magnesium carbonate. So effectively, the carbon dioxide becomes part of this substance here. Very, very stable. The CO2 won't escape from there. So this technique is known as mineral storage. The other technique I'm going to mention is scientists are working on capturing CO2 um, and storing it as part of this process here, which is an example of producing decarbonized fuels. So effectively, methane, which is a carbon-containing fuel, is reacted with water, and the products of the reaction are carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So the CO2 is captured and stored, as we've already discussed. The hydrogen is then used as a fuel. So this is effectively the decarbonized fuel. And the great thing about hydrogen is when it reacts with oxygen, it only produces water. So it's a very clean fuel.